hacer este lugar? A este lugar va a ser para 104 personas. Para tener hombres, mujeres, niños. Hombres, mujeres y familias también. Sí. Un poquito de, de los servicios que van a tener. Uh, van, a, van a recibir uh, servicios de empleo, uh, también uh, para buscar casa, ayudar con educación, también van a recibir comida, uh, desayuno, almuerzo, cena, cosas así. Perfecto, gracias Jerry. Cuéntanos acerca de este programa, de este centro, de los programas que van a tener. So, aquí vamos a tener asistencia para la gente que necesita refugio. Nuestro, este, nuestra meta es para que la gente no se quede afuera y tenga un este, espacio seguro donde dormir. Este, aquí vamos a permitir que la gente entre y duerma. También como dijo Gary, le vamos a dar comida y vamos a dar asistencia para que encuentren casa, agarren este, aplicaciones y nuestra gente les ayude a llenar todos los papeles. ¿Cuál es la meta de los programas? Los programas que vamos a ayudarles es a buscar a buscar uh, hogar, casas, hogar, hogar y uh, programas que le pueden ayudar a las personas um, que, que le pueden dar su... Para ahí. salir de las calles, ¿verdad? Uh -huh, sí. Tienen programas de rehabilitación de drogas y también tienen programas de entrenamiento. Un poquito de los programas que van a tener, Gary. Sí, exactamente. Uh, van, a, van a recibir entrenamiento, cómo construir un resume, uh, cómo hacer entrevistas, uh, cómo hacer aplicaciones para encontrar y, y, uh, un hogar, cómo mantener, uh, cómo pagar renta, cosas así. Perfecto. Para quienes acaban de conectar, me encuentro aquí en el Centro Share para desamparados de Sanina que hoy abre sus puertas. Tenemos aquí que tiene la cafetería, la cocina. Hay albergue para cerca de 104 personas. Aquí es básicamente la cocina y los dormitorios están al lado de allá. Les voy a tener más información sobre este centro a las 6 y a las 11 por Noticias Univisión Costa Central. Es una realidad después de muchos años de planeación. Así que es un proyecto grande que se abre hoy aquí en la ciudad de Salinas. Nos vemos a las 6 y a las 11. Adiós.
today um, and we are happy to get this program kicked off and with that I want to introduce our Honorable Mayor Kimberly Craig much everyone for being here um, you know I had the honor and privilege of uh, being on City Council for eight years before stepping off in 2018 and coming back and finally seeing this project through um, the thing that I really want to point out is the city and the county have committed to working collaboratively at all levels for um, reducing and ending homelessness over the next 10 years uh, the project is an example of the great things we can achieve through collaboration. The Share Center uh, was built from the group, uh, from the ground up, excuse me, thanks to the partnership of the City of Salinas, the County of Monterey, and certainly the support of the Leadership Council of the Continuum of Care and Coalition for Homeless Service Providers. Leadership Council approved more than $6 million in funding from the Homeless Emergency Aid Program, which is HEAP funding. Yes, that's worth a... That was... That's what got this built. But also the city and the county both contributed early funding to develop shovel-ready plans um, to be competitive for these grants. The Share Center is the first housing-first shelter in Monterey County. And what that means is a low barrier housing opportunity with no prerequisites for entering. So you can have pets. You don't have to necessarily have all of the requirements of those of some of our warming shelters within the community. It's a very low barrier to, to join and enter in here at the Share Center. Share Center is special because it will be more than a shelter. It will have space to shelter up to 100 city and county residents experiencing homelessness and will provide services in a housing navigation center model, including emergency shelter and wraparound services with that housing first approach. We're looking forward to seeing the Bay Area community services and the success that they've had up in the Bay Area and what they uh, plan to accomplish here in Monterey County. We have great confidence in their work and are thrilled uh, that they are um, operating this facility. Um, I do want to acknowledge uh, the work of Mayor Joe Gunter. Um, Joe was a phenomenal leader for our community and had the ability at a time when the city and the county were really arguing, had the ability to reach across the aisle, talk with county supervisors, really move the needle on homelessness. And I do want to acknowledge his family is here. Um, his daughter, Jody Bennett, and his uh, daughter, Taryn Eisman Gunter, are also here. That's how important this particular project was to Mayor Joe Gunter and his family. I also want to acknowledge, uh, we have council members in the audience, council member Orlando Sornio here supporting. Council, council member Anthony Roche is here. Council member Christy Cromines. We have retired council member Gloria De La Rosa here. I think I got all my council members, if I'm not mistaken, yell at me afterwards if, I'm, if, I, if I miss somebody. Certainly, uh, Monterey County Supervisors Alejo and Phillips were very instrumental in pushing for this, so thank you very much for your leadership over the last several years. Additionally, I want to give a shout out to Chair Super and Supervisor Eskew. She and I came on board in, in December both with a commitment to work through difficult topics together. I'm very grateful for your collaboration and your leadership and commitment to collaboration. Thank you. Certainly the Leadership Council of the Continuum of Care for Monterey and San Benito Counties, the Coalition for Homeless Service Providers, particularly Roxanne Wilson, the Executive Director, the County and City Staff, Steve Kerrigan and Charles McKee, you guys rock in terms of the text messages and the phone calls and all of the inner workings of it. Very grateful for your leadership. And of course, Bay Area Community Services. So thank you very much. I know we have a lot of politicians that want to speak today, so I will get down off of the microphone. Um, but I do want to introduce uh, Chair Wendy Root Eskew for some words. Welcome. Idea. 
that happens because the staff who work with our, our city, the staff who work with our county, the staff who work on our nonprofits come together to work out the details, to find the funding, to navigate the, the contracts, um, and to really uh, hash out all of the things that allow projects like this to come to, to move forward. And the other piece, yeah, thank you. Also, thank my other colleagues, Supervisor Chris Lopez and uh, Supervisor John Phillips, for also joining us here today. Thank you for your leadership in making today a reality. As a Monterey County Supervisor of Salinas and as a co chair of the Leave Me Home Leadership Council, um, which is our continuum of care, I want to really say that today is a historic day as we celebrate the opening of this first year round homeless navigation center in Salinas, accomplished in partnership between the County of Monterey and the City of Salinas. With over 16,000 square feet, this, this is the largest facility of its kind in our county's history. Um, this share center will be a critical safety net for our most vulnerable in our community, um, and most who are women and children. But it is only start to better address our homelessness crisis in our county, and we'll have much more to do in the years ahead. As a new county supervisor on March 16, 2017, I filed the referral to create this new center. The title description states, the temporary winter sh shelter in downtown Salinas is set to close on, in April 2017, and I'm making this referral to site and permit a year-round homeless shelter in Salinas and a smaller site in the Monterey Peninsula. Today and almost four years later, we now have accomplished both. And I only wish, and I only wish my late friend, Salinas Mayor Joe Gunter was here in person to celebrate with us in person, but I know he is with us in spirit. And I especially want to recognize the leadership of Supervisor John Phillips and former Salinas Council Member Scott Davis, who were also real champions to get this project across the finish line. We had all gone together in a search to look at every possible site for this center in Salinas and finally found a permanent home right here on this county property in my district. But let's be clear, our journey to reach this day was not an easy one. We had very vocal opposition, heated town halls, but we heard the concerns from our community and they wanted us to better address this homelessness crisis in Monterey County, but they wanted us to do it right. And just like our temporary shelter on West Alisal Street, we will also manage this center with professionalism and without the stereotypes that are often said about such services. We have learned, uh, earned the community's trust and we can provide services to our residents experiencing homelessness effectively, but most importantly, with dignity, compassion, respect, and never losing our humanity for each other. That's how we do things here in Monterey County. This is also about doing God's work. As my late father, who was a preacher, would often say, we are all God's children. But from this shining example, I hope that the city of Salinas and the county of Monterey will continue to do many more projects to help our homeless get housed and, su and support them with effective services. Today, I have a couple of special guests joining me today that I've asked to come. On September 25th, 2018, we took a historic vote to approve the MOU between the city of Salinas and the county of Monterey to create the Share Center. There were many adults who spoke against creating this center, but that day, there were also three little girls who sounded like the adults in the supervisor's chamber that day, teaching and reminding the adults about compassion and having a heart for our most vulnerable. They had their uh, talking points, and they read in part, 
When I grow up, I want to work hard to create shelters for homeless. And another read, I want to build a hotel. And then after a few weeks or a day, I want to give them money so that they'll get a job, then buy a home and live happy. That is what I want to do when I grow up for the homeless. Today, we have even converted the Good Night Inn here in Salinas as a hotel as another place to house our homeless residents too. Well, two of those three little girls have rejoined us today to share a few special words. I wanted to acknowledge their advocacy to make today a reality. Let's please give a big welcome to Clarissa and Paola. They were second graders then, now they're in fifth grade. Thank you both for helping us make today happen. Come on up. state and federal. 
Rodriguez. I'd like to thank the Board of Supervisors. I'd like to say how much I like seeing personally this portrait of Charles and Fred McCall, who I remember very much. And thank you to all the staff who made today possible. Thank you. Well, it is my privilege now to introduce Megan Hunter, who is the Director for so many issues around unhoused, and so it's, it's my privilege to introduce Megan. Thank you, Lori. It's great to work with the county. I, I think we've turned a page in terms of the city and county collaboration, and I do want to also acknowledge a couple of folks that couldn't be here today that were really um, also instrumental in, a, in applying for the funding and getting this done, which is um, Lauren Suansupa with the county and Anastasia Wyatt.
acknowledge the leadership of the current council, Mayor Craig, uh, or, you know, Mayor Gunter, um, and really helping us, and of course the partnership with the county, which was instrumental. And I also noticed um, Supervisor Lopez is here, and um, of course uh, Supervisor Adams has always been uh, an advocate as well. So with that, I'd like to introduce um, Jonathan Russell of Bay Area Community Services. It is definitely an honor um, for us to participate and partner with the community in this effort. As I think about the future of this center, I can't help but think about moments in history um, and moments very similar to the moments we've lived through over the past couple of years. Um, the Kruner Commission in 1968 was a groundbreaking study that President Johnson set into motion after the long hot summer of 1967 to examine all of the social disorder and the unrest and the uprisings in communities. And it was a 400 page document and while the sweeping changes uh, that really represented a very progressive, a very new way of looking at addressing issues of poverty, issues of injustice, um, issues of racism in our community, where it said, we fix these problems by creating resources and opportunities, developing robust social services and resources to communities that have been deprived. While those things did not come to pass, it did set in motion a new way of thinking. And as I drove down early, early this morning, I couldn't help but think through some of the groundbreaking words that were said there in that report, which is, we need new attitudes, new understanding, and most importantly, a new will to change these issues. And when I think about the SHARE Center, I see it as a representation of those new attitudes, which are welcoming, which are low barrier, which are inclusive. A new understanding that we have to focus on housing first, that we have to look at the a trauma-informed approach, not what people have done, but what has happened to people, what has been their experience, and that we need to be oriented toward removing barriers to housing, not creating them. And it is most definitely Bax's honor to, to partner with this community. We are a community-based agency that's been doing this work since 1953. And we are, we see ourselves in as an extension of this community as we enter it humbly to support and partner with our staff, all of which are local from this community, from management down to our direct service staff. And as we join in this, we look forward to continuing the conversation of how we can best serve this community, bring our expertise and experience, and help to partner with this wonderful movement to focus on serving those with opportunities for housing that have so often been deprived. So with that, it's my distinct honor to welcome everyone over to the Ribbon Cutting. This is exciting. It took over four years to build this care center. It's the first and largest permanent year-round shelter done with the county and the city of Salinas. It's going to serve over 100 homeless residents to get them to housing and to jobs and a better um, uh, standard of living here in our county. I know when it comes to, to the dealing with homelessness and that issue, a lot of times things fall flat or people get upset, like you said. Like, you know, what can you say about the effort and teamwork that stuck with it for four years? Well, I think addressing homelessness, we know it's all a, a crisis, and it takes a lot of courage and leadership. And there was a lot of people involved in making this happen, including the late Mayor Joe Gunter, uh, Council Member Scott Davis, and we had heated town halls, uh, a lot of uh, mean things said, but I think we earned the trust of the community to show that we are doing something about homelessness in, in our county, but we're going to do it right. And I think uh, this is an example of uh, having a beautiful place for our most vulnerable to come to, and hopefully get them into permanent housing. Do you 
you think you did it right here and why? I think this is the ideal location right here. There's no neighbor around. This is a county property. We have to spend millions on just acquiring the property. And with the state funding that came through, we were able to get this project off the ground. But to be honest, it's only the one of many that we need to do. We know that we need to build more housing, permanent supportive housing, other similar housing projects throughout the county. So we're only beginning. But I think this is, I think if we can show that we could do it right from the beginning, we're going to replicate this model in other parts of the county. Sure. What's your goal here? When it, I, uh, I, well, we know that right now at the, at the previous temporary shelter, over two-thirds were women and children. Uh, that if we didn't have some place for them to go, they'd be out sleeping in a car, out in a, somewhere in the community that's unsafe. And, and this will show us that we have a safe place, we have services, there's security. We're going to have a great place for them to uh, stay and get better services. Um, don't leave yet! Okay, alright. <laughs> Uh, when is it open and you know how do people start to apply get in the applications are open online and many what the people that were started because it's limited capacity because of the pandemic still well, we're moving uh, uh, families and individuals from our temporary shelter to this particular site and we hope to be open uh, this week how many people are going there uh, total i think it's 103 304 individuals but i think right now we're having to open at half capacity okay you said 300 Oh, 103. 104. Oh, 103. <laughs> like, that's a lot. All right, and then lastly, what are you guys looking forward to? You said you have some more shelters and more work to do. Right, we're, we're, we're already starting looking at other sites where we could have, we know, uh, have similar projects. We know that there's millions of more dollars coming. The governor already approved uh, a record multi billion dollar package over the next two years, um, uh, six billion each year. So it's significant funding. But we know that shelters are only the safety net. The real answer is, is building permanent supportive housing, smaller units for, for individuals and families to stay, but giving them the services so that they stay housed, that they don't go back into being homeless. That's going to be key. We've learned from lessons from many other communities. We don't have to be at the will, but let's do this right. We can have these, these kind of shelters and services, but not with many of the stereotypical things like I said. We can do these, uh, do these services with compassion, dignity, and respect for all our county residents, including our poorest residents. You talk about those background services, you know, yeah, we, we have employment services here, adult education services. We're going to have a community garden here on the back side of this location. Pets are going to be welcome here. So these are all uh, options and services that we couldn't have at the previous limited uh, old public defender site building just because of its uh, old, uh, it was an old building. Here, we built this and designed it to fit the needs that we heard from our uh, unhoused individuals in the county. Absolutely. Anything else to surprise you this time? No, I think this is exciting, and I think uh, we're going to show we're going to do this right. It's going to be a shining example here in Monterey County, and I, I hope that that will help us keep public confidence that we can uh, serve our, our homeless residents and do it the right way.